Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel my name is DFree and here today we have something a little different now I don't typically do videos like this so also if you guys want to see more videos like this when I explain it and you watch it you're done with it and you enjoy it whatever the case is let me know in the comments down below some things you guys want to see ranked in a similar fashion but I don't typically do videos like this but I thought it was a fun one because I see kind of how things are in the game and it's it's looking a little congested right when it comes to all the Zenkai character banners that are up at a at any given moment now depending on whether or not you could summon on them you'll see them if you can't you won't but they added all five of these character banners to being permanent so they are permanent and also over the last month and a half to two months they enabled for returning zenkai banners to have daily discount summons so here's the deal you're gonna see seven eight uh something like that banners at any given moment that all have daily discount hovering over them and again it could get kind of congested and maybe you want to consider which ones you should prioritize maybe you've been looking for this type of video already for the last like couple of weeks so i'm a little late on this but whatever the case is i thought it'd be a fun topic to discuss considering which ones out of all five of these and i'll consider kid goku as well even though he doesn't necessarily fit uh considering where all these units rank in a tier list of sorts and where you should be prioritizing them what your top or bottom priority should be based on what teams you guys have built and what your potential usages of these characters are like offerings and kai ability buffs etc to other characters that you may have uh, or maybe aspiring to own that being said if you want me to come back and add the other 20 or so zenkai characters to this list if we had our light goal of 3500 i'll do it but i could it, it, that that might be a longer video that i might have to kind of breeze through but there's a lot of characters that are not a part of this list because again the, i'm only doing the ones that are permanent now for example android 18's banner is back for a daily discount i'm going to just say she's one of the top three or so characters in the game period you need to summon on that banner i don't care if you like her i don't care if you like girls i don't care if you like andra i don't care about anything <laughs> you need to own that character right so that's how i feel about it so we're going to talk about these characters here you see on the screen and uh oh quick plug courtesy of girls i know some of you guys saw this and were like no nah, i don't want to watch the girls video watch the girls video i'd rather watch the girls video for one it's not doing that particularly great and i thought it was a fun video and there's nothing worse when you're a content creator than seeing a video grossly underperformed it, not there's one thing about underperforming but grossly underperformed so that's why i'm throwing the promo here but i really enjoyed that video so check it out link is down below and uh, some of the other ones if you haven't seen them recently i've been having a ton of fun and uh, hopefully that's ex you know i can exude that throughout my videos right that being said let's get started so uh we're gonna start off in this order so blue goku where do I rank Blue Goku? I think he's the best character on this list. Uh, obviously, I can't say for every single person uh, that plays the game because I don't know everybody's individual status, their box, what they own, what they don't own, blah, blah, blah. I think he is the best soul character on this list when it comes to overall kit. And I also think he's the best character on this list when it comes to team options. Sun Family, best team in the game? Okay, perfect. He is uh, not the ideal blue, I guess, when you go to the meta, uh, you know, analysis sites and all that stuff. Shout out to the boys over at Game Press and stuff. But uh, I don't feel like if I were using him over Namek Goku, I don't feel like I'm losing that much. I love this Goku. He is really, really good. So anyways, long story short, he's great on Sun Family. He's great on God Key. He's also great on Sans. He, I mean, he'd be great on whatever team you want to run, but these are the main three tags he's got. So uh, God Key is a team that I think most people should be keying in on as one of their few mains, especially if you're a budget player, free player, etc. I think that you guys should be really, really considering building out a few teams specifically as opposed to everything, because if you care about obviously competitive, if you're trying to collect and you don't care about that, that doesn't matter, right? But if you care about being competitive and you really want to manage your resources, you've got to do something like this. This is where I built my free to play account during the anniversary. I built it around kind of like future and god key and also gt boy did they fall off man they haven't got anything since dude i feel really disgusted about investing in gt for the anniversary that's one of my main teams the side note that's a rant more about that in another video actually i've already done a video on that anyways so uh yeah god key's one of the teams you guys should be considering and uh he fits perfect here right also on that same topic i mean like if you want to own him just a freaking zenkai buff vegeto blue I wouldn't fault you. Vegito's awesome still, so that's perfectly fine, right? Saiyans, same type of deal. He doesn't buff them, but so what? 
He's perfectly fine on this team. You're going to be good to go. You don't need all six Z abilities. You really don't. You'll be fine with even four. You're, you, you might even be fine with three in high tier gameplay. But at least four is where I say. But anyways, he doesn't have to buff them. He is perfectly fine here. So long story short, I think he's the best character on this list. He should be pretty much number one priority. And uh, if you don't own him, you don't build those teams, maybe you should consider starting to build some of those teams for some of the reasons that I mentioned. Whether how good they are or just the uh, sustainability that they might have and stuff like that. Maybe you have some of the pieces to some of these teams, right? And he might be the missing piece to tie it together to where you have a functioning team. Maybe you don't have Gohan here, but maybe you have Goten, right? You got Goten here. You get that Zenkai Goku and you add like another character on this list. I don't know who. Maybe like maybe you get uh, this dude Zenkai or something like that. You'd be perfect. You'd, you'd be wrecking dudes, man. Whatever the case is, you don't need every meta thing on this list, right? In terms of building these teams. So Broly. Broly is interesting. Uh, I think that if you enjoy Broly, you should definitely go for it, for one. But on the topic, if you enjoy Super Saiyans, um, I think he's worth owning. Most people, when it comes to Super Saiyans, uh, what they're running is a blue, blue, purple team. Or, and what I mean by that is these two blue Saiyans in the very, very top left. And they throw in uh, they throw in purple SS3 Goku because he's the best purple. There's no reason. And I've, I've seen people say or, like, suggest that you should run this Super Vegeta because he can get crit buffs or like Super Vegito, the purple uh, LF. There's no reason to do that. Why would you run an underwhelming character just so they can get crit buffs when you could run one of the most oppressive offensive units in the whole game? And he's the only one not getting the buff, but he's still has a massive op offensive pivot and he still has enough Z abilities. There's no reason to do that, right? So that being said, um, yeah, it, a lot of people are doing something like that or they're running like uh, Blue Bardock alongside Gogeta and some other variation, maybe Purple S3 again. And this is where Saiyans and Super Saiyans currently in the meta are largely the same team for a lot of people. But regardless, so if you need a green for this team and he is a Saiyan, so he's going to get some of those Z abilities as well from like if you have this dude, I guess, right? If you don't, whatever. He's still going to get the Super Saiyan Z abilities as well from some of these characters. I think that if you uh, need a green, and you want a green. You should definitely go for Broly. He fits perfect. I like Broly a lot. A lot more than I did on his release. I don't think he's like a top tier Zenkai, but I think he's definitely uh, somewhere worth owning, right? So uh, powerful opponent. I don't think you need him. If you have Goku Black, you're set, in my opinion. Honestly, I think if you have Jiren, you might be set. But if you don't have Goku Black at the bare minimum, you might want to consider it. But again, it kind of depends on the rest of the layout of your team. Like if you got a Blast-oriented team, maybe you don't really want to invest too much in Broly that much because he wants to be more on a strike-based team and stuff like that. Even though he has the double cards, he still has the bonuses most, most of the time for being uh, on strikes and stuff like that. So, and, and same goes for Saiyan. Uh, there's not a ton of green competition, so he'd actually be really good on Saiyan. But by that same vein, if you were going to use them on Saiyans, you could use some of the other non-buffing green characters on the Saiyan team as well, and you'd be set. You'd be perfectly fine, right? And forgive me if I forget, like, any character throughout this list, like, that has a Zenkai or weird things like that. I'm kind of kind of trying to go a little quickly. But long story short, when it comes to Broly, I'm going to rank him in A as one of the better options you can actually own. And uh, also, I didn't talk, talk about movies that much. Not a ton of green competition off the top of my head on movies. Uh, movies also is a team that should should be considered as one of your main teams that you're going to build out going forward because movies, uh, it's just like God Key, seems like it, not not to the degree of God Key, but similar to God Key, movies seems like a team that they would be constantly buffing and uh, getting Zenkais and things like that. So I think you should consider building out movies. So again, A rank is fine for him. Let's take a look at the other Broly. Other Broly, I don't think is anywhere near as important. I'm going to say actually... Other Broly might be a C rank. Uh, and this is not me saying Green Broly is two tiers better as a solo character than Blue Broly. Even if you may think that, I don't know if I think that. I, but regardless, this is, not, this is not ranking me. This is not me ranking me saying them uh, they're this or that better. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm saying based on their utility, what you should prioritize based on said utility and the overall usage and impact they're going to have on your account and your roster, right? For example, I'm probably going to do that. Do I think they're better than Broly? Hell no. <laughs> Not at all. These are arguably the two worst Zenkais in the entire game, back to back. So no. But their Zenkai abilities have immense value. So I think they're, they're probably going to wind up there, and I'll come back to Kid Goku. So anyways, uh, they're already kind of placed. Let's talk about Broly. Uh, I, I, I think what happens with Broly is whatever team you're going to put him on, <laughs> if you own this dude, you're running this dude. But by that same vein, Broly does buff blue Sagas from the movie's character. So any Sagas from the movie character that is blue will be able to benefit from that Zenkai ability. There's not a ton in here that are actually relevant, but 
there is one dude that's really relevant among this cast. So again, if you own this, this dude and you want to get him more stats, like I use the Blue Broly on my bench because I only have this dude at two star. Yeah, well, with a two star LF, what? Um, anyways, so I use him to buff this dude, get another 40 or 35 or so percent on the stats, and he performs quite well quite well um so that's what i do i use blue broly as a bench if you do not own this dude i think blue broly's value if you own blue broly the other blue broly i think this is how he looks if you own lf blue broly if you don't own lf blue broly i think this is how he looks for the record so he's probably gonna be the only character on the list that i do that for because that could apply to a ton of characters and i'm just not gonna do it every time um so anyways uh if we go back over here to the other blue broly so um Looking at his teams, Super Saiyan, I don't think you particularly need him on this team. And, and largely because, like I mentioned earlier, it's blue, purple, red, or things like that. I don't think you you need to run blue, blue, purple. I, you could find success, but I don't think you need to run blue, blue, purple with this dude, the other dude, and a Bardock, and uh, a purple. I don't think you need that. Saiyans, I don't think they need this dude as well either because it's the same freaking team. But you have more options in uh, LF Vegeta. LF, these are LF characters, so not everybody's going to have them. We have more options, right? I might even argue you might be better off running. Uh, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm not even going to say nah, that was blasphemous. I'm not even going to go there. Uh, so, powerful opponent, same deal. Um, there's not actually, when it comes to powerful opponent in movies, there's not really a ton of competition. Um, he might just well be your best blue for movies if you don't own that dude. If you don't own the LF, he might just be your best blue, which makes him, by extension, worth running. Uh, but Saiyans and Super Saiyans, they don't need him. Not, not at all, for the most part. Um, if you wanted to run Saiyans without Blue Bardock and LF Vegeta and LF Goku Zenkai, then maybe, and without Vegito, <laughs> then maybe you run, no, you run freaking Blue Goku. Like, then, <laughs> no, there's, I like Blue Broly a lot, but like, he's kind of in a position where you just don't need him. This is why he's the lowest ranked one so far. So, Vegeta and Goku. Everything I say about one applies to the other for the record. Where's the Vegeta at? He disappeared. Where's the Vegeta? I'll, I'll just pull him up again. Everything I say about one applies to the other. I don't care which one you think is better than the other. Uh, the, the gap wouldn't be that big either way. I don't really care. I, um, I was one of the first people <laughs> to Zenkai 7 this dude back when it cost 20,000 CC. One of my biggest regrets ever. That being said, he was nice when he came out when there were only a few Zenkais because his, his he was very powerful relative to the rest of the game. But since there's over 20 now, you see how that could change. Uh, they're not all created equal, which is why there has to be somebody at the bottom. But that being said, the bottom still is better than at least 50% of the game, I think. That's fair, right? Anyways, so their value, long story short, comes uh, from their Zenkai ability. So there's the ability, it works too, right? It's it's a it's a widespread Z ability for Saiyans. This dude has freeze of force, whatever. But Saiyans is always gonna be a tag you should impact, uh, or uh, you should work on because the impact is gonna have going forward. But there's Zenkai ability, purple sand characters. Anytime there's a purple sand that comes out, like this dude or whatever, they are going to get access to Vegeta's Zenkai ability. That is immense value. That anytime it's a, a Zenkai ability for Saiyans or hybrids. Those are going to be pretty much the best two going forward. There might be a couple that are close, but those are going to be the ones that are going to have the best value going forward because our main freaking characters, right? <laughs> because our main characters. Maybe the family teams work too, but you get the point. They're our main characters. This dude is for Red Sands. Any Red Sand, like Red Bardock, he's going to get the buffs, right? Uh, again, I always point this out. You have to be the tag and element. It's not either or. You have to be both. It's only Red Sands, right? So Red Vegeta, Bardock, SS4. And then also... This dude, I think, is still one of a kind right now, where Vegeta is not one of a kind. There is that purple Goku. And I'll say this. I always say this from time to time. I do not think you need to run more than maybe two of the same Zenkai buffer on your team. I mean, like, if there was five characters with this dude's exact Zenkai ability for purple sands, do you need to run five on one freaking team? No, stop. Don't do that. Maybe two. Don't do that. You're not going to see it. I... I run teams like that from time to time for people and they're good videos like i did the five times sell one because that was fun to see uh yeah like lf piccolo uh Z zenkai 18 like you can see it right there's five dudes zenkai buffing him like frieza and stuff like that. five he does no more damage than if there was one dude buffing him it's not you're not gonna see it so don't even bother okay he's just not gonna see it 
<laughs> he maybe does a decimal more damage it feels okay maybe two characters i won't say one but like it's not a huge difference and honestly it starts to get super stingy you lose out on z abilities overall it's just not a good thing but with two and i said that to say because this is again duplicated this dude's with uh ss3 goku the purple one if you wanted to run him and ss3 together on the team to make your ss3 better perfect if you even wanted to run him and ss3 as benchers for like somebody like uh ui goku that's fine too i wouldn't go much further than that like i said but that's fine too but long story short their value is high even if they're not the best fighters and, and hey they might they might be usable in a pinch right might be usable in a pinch so goku's uh he's another character that was part of this uh story revamp i'm not gonna dig out the actual news post but they added like all six of these characters to the story revamp and um shortly after they zenkai the green and blue uh goku here and green broly as well um but they added all of these characters and, and uh, kid goku i believe to story and you can get them all just to seven star via missions so since that's the case i'm gonna rank kid goku i think kid goku is actually quite high on the list yeah i think kid goku is quite high on the list i think his value is very high he's got the worst z ability on this team overall out of all uh, not this team but these characters overall his uh z ability is the worst but Actually, I, I think he deserves to go here simply because he doesn't even cost CC. He just costs tickets. He costs your time. <laughs> That's what it is. But uh, in terms of kit and I guess value, he goes here. But I'll just put him here because he has an entirely different resource. His value is incredibly high in terms of the, what he can still provide. He still can be a very good damager, a very aggressive unit. Uh, also still has the endurance, still has some of the best support in terms of uh, supporting what, not the best support in general. There's a lot better support characters because he's not even a support type but some of the best support in terms of being a point character for a very relevant team in the game. So that's all I really need to say about this dude. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed today's video, again, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see me revisit something like this, be sure to hit the thumbs up as well. 3,500. And before you go, check out that video down below. Have an awesome day, and I'll be seeing all of you in the next one.